Hello students, welcome to our online video tutorial class. Uh, I think you have seen all videos, whatever I have made on the chapter Plant Kingdom. So after Plant Kingdom, according to our syllabus, there is a next chapter is coming that is regarding Animal Kingdom. In this chapter, we will be discussing about the various features of the various animals who are belonging from various phylums. We will be studying about special features as well as general features. As we have studied in the plant kingdom, the various types of plant divisions and based on some specific features we have also compared them, we have categorized them. So here also in the animal kingdom, we will be categorizing the animals based on some specific features. So whatever the features, let's see. First feature is level of body organization, second one is body plan, third one is symmetry, fourth one is siloam. Fifth one is germ layer, sixth one is metamerism or segmentation, next one fate of blastopod and the next circulatory system and the last one notochord. So based on these all features we are classifying the organisms. So one by one feature we will be discussing now how we are classifying organisms based on each and every feature. First you can see there is a feature that is a level of body organization that means the various levels of the body organization we can see in case of various organisms. So first of all if you see the porifera or sponge like organisms you can understand only the cellular level of body organization we can see here because the cellular level of the body organization which is commonly found in case of porifera that is only the cellular aggregate. Porifera is made up of only so many cells and those cells are not communicating each other. Okay, so that cellular level of body organization can be commonly found in case of porifera. When multiple cells are communicating with each other, they are forming the tissue like structure and this specific tissue like body organization can be found in case of nidaria as well as in case of tenophora organisms because they are having tissue and those tissue are obviously made up of cells and those cells are communicating with each other. Now, when multiple tissues are actually getting communicated with each other or they are associated with each other and forming the next system or the level of system that is the organ level of body organization. Keep it in your mind after Nidaria and Tinophora, Platyhel means Nematoda, these two organisms are commonly showing organ level of body organization because they are having organs and those organs are responsible for performing various kind of activities. Now, when various organs are getting accumulated, they are forming various kinds of physiological system. So the last one we can say, last category we can say organ system level of body organization. That means in this type of the body organization, various organs are accumulated with each other and forming physiological systems. So you can consider starting from Annelida, then Arthropoda, Mollusca, Echinodermata and then entire all organisms of the chordate they are coming under this organ system level of body organization. So actually we have seen here based on the level of body organizations we have categorized the organisms into multiple categories cellular body organization category, tissue level of body organization category, organ level of body organization category and organ system level of body organization category. Now we are going for the next feature that is a body plan. Body plan means if you see starting from porifera up to echinodermata as well as if you see the all organisms present within the phylum chordata, you will see they are having a specific type of plan in their body. Plan means I am talking about the arrangement or the organization of the body parts or organs that is actually known as or commonly known as body planning. So if you see in case of porifera, you will be seeing the body plan type is cell aggregate body plan. That means porifera is exclusively made up of multiple types of cell, there only the aggregation, there is no communication in between the cells. So that is commonly known as cellular aggregate body plan and commonly it is found in case of sponges or in case of porifera, we can say. After porifera, in case of nidaria and tenophora, we can see the next type of the body plan and that is the blind sac body plan. What is blind sac body plan? It is actually that in case of this nidaria and tenophora, you can see the entire body is like a blind sac. There is only one aperture or one opening and that opening is considered as a mouth as well as that opening is actually functioning as the anus. So this kind of the body plan is exclusively found for the nidaria and tenophora. 
and that is the blind sac body plan. After tenophora, starting from the platyhel means up to echinodermata and then all organisms under phylum chordata, these all organisms are actually showing the body plan that is the tube within tube body plan. That means their body is first of all tubular, pipe like and within the pipe or within the tubular body shape there is another tube that is the elementary canal. So within the pipe like or tubular body due to presence of the another pipe like structure that is the elementary canal that is why it is commonly known as tube within tube body plan. And keep it in your mind in case of this tube within tube body plan two types of openings are present one is mouth another is anus okay. Now the next point is regarding the symmetry what is the symmetry the arrangement or the organization of the body parts rather body organs or tissues in a geometric manner around the central axis. So for each and every organism there is a central axis we all know. So surrounding that central axis there is a presence of multiple body organs and that arrangement or the organization of the body organs surrounding the central axis is commonly known as the symmetry. Now the point is whatever the types of body symmetry. Body symmetry actually are of three types. One is asymmetrical, second one radial symmetry, radial symmetry and third one bilateral symmetry. What is asymmetrical? Asymmetrical means in case of which organisms there is no symmetry. Those organisms are commonly known as asymmetrical. So keep it in your mind porifera is the organism or the sponges are the organism which are showing asymmetry in their body. Radial symmetry, this is a type of symmetry which is commonly found in case of spherical or round organisms. In case of these organisms, if you cut the organism along the radius, you will be getting two equal halves. So in case of Nidaria and in case of Tenophora, this radial symmetry can be found. Next, there is a presence of bilateral symmetry. What is that? This is a type of symmetry where any organism, if it will be excised in a longitudinal plane, then obviously we will be getting two halves. One is left half, another one is right half. So this kind of the symmetry is commonly known as bilateral symmetry where the animal body is divided along the longitudinal plane and we will be getting two halves right and left. So this kind of symmetry can be found starting from platyhel means then nematoda, annelida and astropoda, mollusca and echinodermata as well as throughout the entire all chordates this kind of symmetry can be found. So this is the classification of organisms based on the symmetry. Now we are coming for the next point that is the coelom. What is about the coelom? We all know coelom is a fluid filled body cavity which is present within the mesodermal lining. That means if the cavity which is fluid filled is properly surrounded by the mesodermal lining then only that cavity is known as coelom. Now based on this presence or absence of the coelom animals can be categorized into three different categories. What are the categories? First one are coelomate category that means in this category we can say those organisms are kept which are not having any silo or body cavity. So that is totally absent. So these kind of organisms are commonly known as acylomate organisms. Example platyhelminths. Not only platyhelminths, porifera, nidaria, tenophora and platyhelminths. All these four phylum organisms are belonging from this category that is platyhelminths. Now after acylomate there is another category that is pseudocylomate. What is pseudocylomate? Pseudocylomate means these are the organisms where the body cavity is present but that is not the true body cavity. Why not true? Because the body cavity is not lined by mesoderm rather it is lined by ectoderm and endoderm and the body cavities are also present in their body in a scattered pouch form. So for that reason those specific type of siloms are commonly found they are known as pseudocilomate, uh, pseudocilome and the organisms are known as pseudocilomate organisms. Example obviously nematoda or ascalmins this kind of organisms are showing the false silom and that's why they are known as pseudocilomate. Coming to the last category that is eucilomate. Eucilomate means in those case of in case of those organisms who are having the true silom they are known as eucilomate organisms. So what is eucilom? Eucilom means when the body cavity is present which is properly filled with the body fluid and that is surrounded by the mesodermal lining. So then this kind of the body cavities are commonly known as eucilom and in case of which organisms these eucilomes are present automatically they are known as eucilomate. Starting from anilida up to the mammal these all organisms are containing the silom lined by the mesodermal lining that's why they are known as eucilomate. So now just I am showing you the photograph or the images whatever this is the acylomate you can understand because this green layer is actually the ectodermal layer 
this blue layer is actually the mesodermal layer and inside there is one more layer is present that is endodermal layer and inside this specific white portion that is the gut or elementary canal so you can see here in between mesoderm or in between ectoderm and endoderm there is no other cavity is present so for that reason this is the body plan or this is the type of the structure which you can see in case of acylomate organisms now if you will be coming to the pseudocylomate organism who are having false coelom for them we can see that outer the layer that this specific layer i am talking about this layer is exclusively the ectoderm after that the mesoderms you can see they are not present in a continuous manner rather they are actually formed the pouch like structure so these are actually the mesoderm and after that this is the endodermal lining and within that inside the endoderm there is a gut or elementary canal this is the lumen so here you can see properly the uh, body cavity which is filled with the fluid that is surrounded by the mesoderm but it's not present in a continuous manner rather they are present in a pouch manner so for that reason this is actually the figure of pseudocoelom and in case of which organisms this pseudocoelom can be found they are known as pseudocoelomate now if you will come to the eucoelom or eucoelomate organisms you can see outer there is a presence of ectoderm after that there is a presence of the blue colored layer this is the outer mesodermal layer then there is another small blue color ring like structure or blue color layer that is the inner mesodermal layer after that inside there is another layer and that layer is commonly known as endodermal layer and within that there is a presence of a lumen that is the gut here one thing we need to keep it in our mind that the outer mesodermal layer is commonly known as parietal mesoderm and inner mesodermal layer is commonly known as visceral mesoderm and another more important point is that in between these two mesodermal lining there is a cavity present and this cavity is commonly known as coelomic cavity one more point this outer mesoderm or the parietal mesoderm and the inner mesoderm or visceral visceral mesoderm these two mesodermal linings are connected with each other by the help of this specific linkage or this specific bridge and this is commonly known as mesentery so this is overall the entire eucoelom structure and in case of which animals you can see this eucoelom they are commonly known as eucoelomate organisms so this is overall the diagrams please practice these diagrams because these diagrams are very much important you need to also draw in the exam now we are coming to the next point that is types of germ layers found in animals we all know germ layer is a group of cells in an embryo that interact with each other as the embryo develops and contribute to the formation of all organs and tissue so the germ layer is actually the layers multiple layers which are present in the embryo and when those specific cells present in the germ layer they will interact with each other they will be forming the all various organs all organs and the, as well as the tissues in the animal body or in the plant body so now we need to see whatever the types of germ layers can be found one is the outer germ layer that is the ectoderm that is forming the exoskeleton we all know as well as they will be forming the epidermis or skin they will be forming the brain they will be forming the nervous system as well as the sense organs so all these things brain nervous system sense organ epidermis exoskeletal structures these all will be coming from the outer germ layer that is ectoderm next there is a middle germ layer present that is commonly known as mesoderm keep it in your mind this mesoderm is exclusively responsible for producing the various tissues like muscle tissue like blood tissue like bones cartilage and all these things are commonly made up of mesoderm as well as they are also producing the outer wall of internal organs that is commonly produced by the mesoderm after that if you will come to the innermost germ layer that is endoderm and keep it in your mind this endoderms are exclusively producing the inner lining of the organs the organ or the or various kinds of system their inner lining is commonly made up of this endoderm so these three germ layers are responsible for producing three different portions three different parts of the various organisms now we are coming to the next slide where we can see the types of animal based on the number of germ layers if you can see in case of any of the organism the number of germ layer is 2 that means the ectoderm is present and endoderm is present there is no mesoderm so those organisms will be categorized as diploblastic organism and if you will see that any of the organisms are having three germ layers ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm and in distinct manner those organisms will be considered as a triploblastic organism so let's see animals they are having two germinal layers animals they are having three germinal layers diploblastic organisms are having ectoderm and inner endoderm in case of them they are having ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm all 
Diploblastic organisms are uh, Porifera, Nideria, Tinophora, these all organisms are diploblastic organisms, but starting from Plachyhelminths, they are all triploblastic organisms. Keep it in your mind, here it is written Arthropoda, Vertebrate, Mollusca, Echinodermata, but starting from Plachyhelminths onwards, they are all triploblastic. Before that, Porifera, Nideria, Tinophora, they are having two distinct germinal layers, ectoderm and endoderm, and in between the ectoderm and endoderm, they are not having mesoderm, but the precursor form of the mesoderm is present, that is a mesenchyme, but they will be considered as the diploblastic organisms. Coming to the next point, that is the metameric segmentation or metamerism. What is metamerism? Metamerism is the phenomenon of having a linear series of body segments or body fragments which are fundamentally similar in structure and every unit or the segment is considered as the somite or metameria. So metamerism or segmentation is a such a phenomenon where the body is subdivided, body of any of the organism is subdivided into multiple small small segments which are arranged sequentially. They are all similar looking and keep it in your mind they are considered as a somite or metameria. They are commonly known as metamerism or segmentation. Now the point is Based on this metamerism also, we have categorized the organisms into two categories. One category is that is a true metamerism containing organism, another organism is who are showing the false metameria. That means that phenomenon is known as pseudo metamerism. So, first, if you will see the difference, you can understand that in case of metamerism, they are having true body segments, in case of pseudo metamerism, false segments are present. In case of true metamerism, segments are visible both when body is divided internally and externally. So segmentations are properly visible when the body is divided internally and externally in case of true metamerism. But in case of pseudo metamerism, segmentation is only found externally. Internal segmentation for the pseudo metamerism cannot be visualized. Next, in case of true metamerism, segments are fused and cannot be separated on will. This is the very important point. The segments which are present in case of true metameer containing organism, those segments are properly fused. If you try to cut or if you want to excise any of the segment, it's damn sure that organism will be getting tired. Okay, so that if you will try to cut any of the segment of any kind of true metameer containing organism, obviously the organism will die. Why? Because each and every organ, each and every system is passing from mouth to anus and obviously each and every system passing through each and every metameer. So for that reason, they cannot be properly separated. If you will go for separation, that organism will get killed. Th that means the segments are interdependent on each other. But in case of pseudo metamerism, segments are loosely bound. They can be separated on their will and because each and every segment is actually considered as an independent segment. And obviously the segments are not interacting with each other because within each and every segment, each and every physiological system is present. So for that reason, it is commonly known as pseudo metamerism also. Now, most di distinctive in analytes, keep it in your mind as true metamerism or the true metameer can be found in case of most distinctive in analytes and also seen in the arthropods and chordate. Keep it in your mind, true metamerism can be found in case of most distinctive analytes and also seen in case of arthropods and chordates. And pseudo metamerism can be found in case of tapeworm, that means in case of nematoda. Why? Because they are having proglottids and those proglottids are actually the segments which are independent segments. If you will cut them also, there is no problem. The organism will not die because they are independent. They are not connected with each other. So this is actually the difference in between the true metamerism and pseudo metamerism. Now coming for the next point that is the fate of the blastopore. First of all, we need to know what is blastopore. Blastopore is a specific opening or aperture by which the cavity of the gastrula an embryonic stage in animal development that is the gastrula that communicate with the exterior that means always keep it in your mind after blastula when the embryo will be developing further into gastrula that gastrula is actually containing one aperture through which aperture it is communicating with outside so that specific aperture is commonly known as blastopore now if you can see this blastopore is forming in case of some of the organisms mouth the mouth is forming formed first then those organisms are commonly known as protostomia and if in case of any of the organism the aperture is further forming the anus first and then the mouth then those organisms are categorized as deuterostomia so here keep it in your mind protostomia means those specific type of organisms for whom the stoma or the mouth will be getting developed from the blastopore at first so they are commonly known as protostomia keep it in your mind starting from porifera up to 
Mollusca, all are Protostomia. Starting from Porifera up to Mollusca, all are Protostomia. But starting from Echinodermata and all of the chordates, they are Deuterostomia because they are Blastopore is forming the anus first and then the mouth. So that's why they are Deuterostomia. Proto means initially or beforehand and stomia means mouth so in case of whom the mouth is formed before they are protostomia in case of whom the mouth is formed later on that is deutero deutero means posterior or later and stomia means mouth that means in case of whom the mouth will be forming last or later they are deuterostomes okay example i have already told you next one is circulatory system what is actually the circulatory system Circulatory system is a type of system through which various kinds of uh, materials like respiratory gases, hormones, enzymes, nutrients, they are getting transported to each and every part of our body and through which system it is actually happening, that specific system is commonly known as circulatory system. Now the point is or the, now the question is the circulatory system is how many types? The circulatory system is of two types, one is open circulatory system, another one is the closed circulatory system. Keep it in your mind, the open circulatory system is a type of circulatory system where the body, inside the body there is no blood vessel. There is some common passages are present, those are known as uh, lacuna or sinuses and through those lacuna or sinuses the blood is actually flowing. And keep it in your mind, in case of open circulatory system containing organisms, true heart is not present. So the, for that reason blood pumping cannot happen that much, how it is found in case of closed circulatory system. So most all of the invertebrates including uh, porifera to echinodermata mostly they are all open circulatory system only keep it in your mind the annelida that is actually showing the closed circulatory system because if you see the earthworm they are having closed circulatory system all other invertebrates all are open circulatory system but if you go for the vertebrates or coordinate category they are all again closed circulatory system showing. So in case of closed circulatory system what is actually told closed circulatory system is a type of circulatory system where the blood or the body fluid is closed or enclosed within the blood vessel and they are always passing through the blood vessel and the heart is there for pumping the blood and capillary network is also there which is actually present in the junction of the uh, artery and vein. So this is actually the closed circulatory system which is only found in case of annelida that is a invertebrate and all in uh, and in all vertebrates also this kind of circulatory system can be found. Now coming to the next slide where it is discussed regarding the notochord. Notochord is actually the flexible rod shaped body found in the embryos of all cardates derived from the mesoderm keep it in your mind. So it is always derived from the mesoderm and it is flexible rod shaped structure and it is found in the dorsal side of all embryo obviously of the cordates. So this notochord serves as the basis for axial skeleton keep it in your mind this notochord is exclusively responsible for producing the backbone. In case of us, in case of vertebral organisms, this notochord is actually getting modified to vertebral column and that vertebral column is present in case of modified organism. Now the point in, in case of it induces the overlying ectoderm to differentiate to neuroectoderm and form the neural plate. Keep it in your mind, this notochord can be further modified into neuroectoderm structure as well as they can be forming the neural plate also. Now, based on the presence or absence, if you categorize the notochord, then uh, based on the notochord presence or absence, obviously we can categorize the organisms into two categories. One is non-corded, that means who are, have no, who are not having any kind of notochord, they are all non-corded or invertebrates and in case of which organisms the notochord is present, they are commonly known as corded. So, this is the categorization of the organisms based on the presence or absence of the notochord. Next. Next is the slide where we can see actually the classification of organisms based on the fundamental features. What are the fundamental feature or basic features? Actually if we classify the organisms, we can see there are three fundamental features or basic features. One is level of body organization, second one is symmetry and third one is body cavity or silo. So here we can see the entire animal kingdom or animalia. They are first of all segregated into two levels, one is cellular level, another one is tissue, organ or organ system level of organization. So here within the cellular level only the porifera phylum is present, so that's why that has been segregated initially. Now remaining all phylums have been kept within the tissue or organ or organ system level of organization. 
now these organisms who are present within this entire category they are further divided based on the symmetry so when we are dividing them along based on the symmetry obviously we are getting radial symmetry and bilateral symmetry so keep it in your mind need area that is sedentary organism and tenophora organisms they are all showing radial symmetry so for that reason they have been kept within the radial symmetry and another type of the symmetry is bilateral symmetry that means when the organism can be segregated into two equal halves along the longitudinal plane so due to presence of the bilateral symmetry we have again made another category within the bilateral symmetry except porifera nidaria and tenophora other phylums are present now bilateral symmetry has been categorized based on without body cavity that means acilomate that means which organisms they are not having the silom so they are actually told as the platyhelminths next there is actually the the body cavity or the silom if it is present but that is the false silom they will be the another category that is known as pseudo silomate organisms that is ascalmins or nematoda and the last category has been made who are having true silom so those are commonly known as eu silomate so within this anelida arthropoda mollusca echinodermata hemichordata and all chordate organisms are belonging so based on these three features based on the level of body organization symmetry and serum we have categorized the animal kingdom into multiple phylums okay so i think this classification of organism it is also in your ncert book you can see your ncert book here that is uh, there it is given and if it will be asked in the exam please keep it in your mind that based on the which fundamental features the animal kingdom is classified obviously your answer will be that based on level of body organization based on the symmetry and based on silom based on these three fundamental features animal kingdom is classified into multiple phylums and this classification please go through properly because maybe the question will be coming regarding this you need to draw this entire classification mechanism or classification diagram in your copy coming to the next one that is the phylum porifera that means the basis of classification we have already finished now we will be entering within one by one phylum and we will be discussing about their general features their special features as well as we need to see the diagrams some of the uh, photograph of the animals who are actually belonging from various phylums so let's start with the phylum porifera first of all the meaning of the porifera we need to know pori means the word has come from the pore that is the aperture and fera fera word has come from the ferein ferein means bearing that means pore bearing animals are all belonging from this specific phylum that is porifera now what are the basic characteristic features are present first habitat that aquatic exclusively they are marine few are present they are fresh water what is the level of body organization already i have told they are actually showing cellular level of body organization body planning body planning is obviously the cellular aggregate because the cells are only present they are not communicating with each other only the mass of cells are only present germ layer if you see obviously they are having two germ layers that's why it is known as diploblastic but keep it in your mind instead of the mesoderm they are having a germ layer that is known as mesenchyme so the mesenchyme is actually the intermediate germ layer in between ectoderm and endoderm they are having no symmetry that means they are asymmetrical organisms they are having no silom that means they are acilomate organism they are having no segmentation that means no metametic segmentation can be found asegmented organism circulation it is obviously the canal system because they don't have any kind of the body fluid through their body water is passing and that process of passing or the, that system of passing is commonly known as canal system so canal system is only there for passing of the water and that is the circulatory mechanism now we have come to the next slide where we can see the fate of the blastopore that means the blastopore is forming the mouth here so that's why they are exclusively protostomia respiration that is obviously happening through the canal system because when the water is entering through the through some apertures present on their body surface which are commonly known as ostia obviously the water is ca carrying the respiratory gases so due to carrying the respiratory gases this is keep it in your mind this canal system is actually responsible for the respiration next one excretion keep it in your mind the excretion is actually also done by the canal system because when the water is moving out or coming out from the organism's body through the osculum on that time excreted materials are also get secreted and keep it in your mind these organisms are exclusively ammonotelic because they are releasing ammonia in the water okay nutrition nutrition exclusively holozoic because they are engulfing the food material sexual reproduction they are producing ovum and sperm and they can also asexually reproduce and that can be performed by the process of budding or branching process as well as by the process of fragmentation sexual dimorphism 
can be found they are hermaphrodite organism that means bisexual male and female reproductive organs or structures are present within the same body so that's why they are hermaphrodite next one nervous system nervous system is totally absent for these specific organisms next special features of porifera if you see the special feature they are having the germ layers and out of that uh, germ layer outer layer is commonly known as pinacoderm layer which is made up of pinacocyte cells they are having coanoderm layer also that is made up of coanocyte cells and in between pinacoderm and coanoderm they are having mesenchymal cells so they are having two layers ectoderm that is a pinacoderm and endoderm that is coanoderm and pinacoderm is made up of pinacocyte cells keep it in your mind these pinacocyte cells are containing some needle like sharp needle like structure so that is actually considered as an exoskeletal structure for the sponges and coanoderm is exclusively made up of coanocyte cells which cells are actually present inside the body of the sponges and these cells are exclusively responsible for the respiration for nutrition for drawing the water inside the body of the sponges as well as for propulsing out the water from the sponges bodies these all functions are controlled by the coanocyte cells present in the coanoderm keep it in your mind they are having small pores or aperture on their body then those are commonly known as ostia they are having also the larger pores on their apical portion of the body that is commonly known as osculum keep it in your mind through the ostia the water as well as with the other materials they are entering within the sponges body and through the osculum excreted material respiratory gases like carbon dioxide they are also releasing through osculum keep it in your mind they are having centrally located body cavity that is commonly known as spongocil spongo means sponge and sil means cavity so they are having within the sponge endoskeleton keep it in your mind that endoskeleton can be spicule or spongin fiber spicule means these are also some specific uh, needle like structures which are present inside their body surface so for that reason these are considered as a endoskeleton keep it in your mind these endoskeleton are commonly made up of calcium carbonate that's why they are known as calcareous spicules and keep it in your mind this is this is made up of calcium carbonate they are having another type of the spicule that is the siliceous spicule and keep it in your mind they are made up of the silicic acid also next they are having spongin fiber as a endoskeleton and this is a spongin is a such kind of the protein or it is actually made up of organic substances so these are the endoskeleton which are commonly found in case of porifera and exoskeleton already i have told those are made up of pinacocyte cells and so many other needle like cells which are present in the pinacoderm layer coming to the next slide in this slide actually we will be getting aware of with various kinds of sponges this is the sikon or skypha you can see this is the spongilla or freshwater sponge which is commonly present under the pond also pond pond water also this is the eu spongia or the bath sponge which is commonly used for the bathing purpose next one so after this specific sponge types we have come to the next phylum and that is the phylum nidaria so let's see what about the phylum nidaria we need to know keep it in your mind nidaria this word has actually come from the word night k n i d k n i d e night means stinging so stinging cell when it is present in any of the phylum so or in case of those organisms those are commonly known as nidarian organisms who are containing stinging cells keep it in your mind these organisms can can be also called as cilentereta because their body is containing cilentron or cavity cil means cavity enteron means intestine that means intestine within the cavity they are present in case of these organisms okay now we are coming to the general features of these organisms first of all their habitat is marine exclusively marine fresh water is absent very few are present like as an example hydra germ layer they are having two germ layer that's why they are diploblastic but keep it in your mind in the place of mesenchyme which is present in the porifera here the mesoglea is present level of body organization obviously tissue level of body organization can be found symmetry they are obviously showing the radial symmetry that radial symmetry can be tetrameras radial symmetry that means it can be when the body can be divided into equal halves and the, if the halves or the if the plane will be passing through the radius and tetrameras radial symmetry means if their body can be equally divided into four equal halves or their body can be divided equal into six equal halves so that is commonly known as tetrameras and hexameras radial symmetry body plan exclusively blind sac body plan because they are having a single pore that can be used as a mouse as, as a anus also ectoderm they are having that is called as epidermis endoderm is present that is known as gastrodermis and inner cavity is present that is known as gastrovascular cavity in case of sponge which is known as spongocil in case of this nidaria or cilentereta that is only known as gastrovascular cavity or cilentereta cilentron 
keep it in your mind the mesoglea is present instead of the mesenchyme keep another next important point is that they are having the stinging cells which are commonly known as nidoblast cells and these cells are exclusively having a white like uh, structure white like thread like structure that white like or thread like structure which is present that is introducing hypnotoxin within the prey's body and due to introduction of the hypnotoxin within prey's body that prey will get died so this is the main function of the stinging cell with that also stinging cell has another function they can capture the prey they can even um, help the organisms to attach with the substratum or the surface so for that reason the stinging cell uh, that nidoblast cell is present in case of nidarian organisms Nutrition exclusively holozoic nutrition, they are engulfing the food. Digestion can be intracellular, that means within cell, or it can be extracellular, that means out of the cell. Respiration exclusively through their body surface because they are present under the water, so through the body surface, the exchange of the gases can take place. Excretion that is also happening by the help of body surface, and keep it in your mind, they are present under the water, so for that reason, only one kind of excretory material can be produced by them, that is ammonia. That's why they are ammonotelic. Coming to the next general feature that is a life cycle, keep it in your mind they are having asexual stage as well as sexual stage throughout their entire life. Asexual stage is exclusively called as polyp. Keep it in your mind in this specific stage the organism is attached with the substratum. So for that reason they are commonly known as polyp stage. Sessile flower like structure these are another stage is the sexual stage that is the medusa stage. This is co commonly looking like an umbrella shaped structure and this umbrella is actually floating into the water okay asexual stage that is a polyp stage that is attached with the substratum they can't move they can't float but the ex, uh, sexual stage that is a medusa they can float into the water and they are free swimming stage keep it in your mind this asexual and sexual stage that is a polyp and medusa they are coming in an alternative manner that is commonly known as alternation of generation or metagenesis another very important point is they are having a type of larva that is planula larva Keep it in your mind, they are showing more than one form in their life cycle. That's why that is a polyp also they are showing, medusa also they are showing. So for that reason, this phenomenon is commonly known as polymorphism because polymorphism means showing various kinds of morph or form. And the next important point is example that is hydra, physalia, aurelia, sea anemone. These are the examples of nidaria or rather you can say cylindrata. Now we are coming to the uh, specific type of the cell which is present in case of this nidarian organism or cylindrata organism that is nidoblast. Keep it in your mind nidoblast is such kind of stinging cell with, within which the sting which is present that is the nidocyte and keep it in your mind this nidocyte is containing nidocyst that can be delivered to the various organisms who are actually passing by these organisms. So when they are actually throwing this wipe like or thread like structure obviously this thread like or wipe like structure is responsible for capturing the prey after that that prey will be just pulled towards the organism organism means i am talking about to the nidarian organism and after that by the apical portion of those specific type of sting the toxin will be introduced within the prey's body okay so when it will be introduced within the prey's body after a certain time it will be get paralyzed or it can be also get tired okay so this specific nidoblast cell or nematocyst or nidocyte whatever you want to say this specific type of cell is exclusively responsible for defense purpose against predator it is responsible for capturing the prey this can be used as well as it can be used also for anchorage with the substratum okay so this is the nidoblast cell structure when it is present in the coiled portion coiled position and when the uh, nidoblast cell is just get exposed on that time you can see there is a presence of the sting like structure these are the sting like structures by which they are actually introducing the toxin within the animal's body and at the apical portion there is a wipe like or thread like structure by which they are capturing the prey okay or capturing any of the sub substratum so this is the entire nidoblast cell now we are going to the next slide where we will be just get aware with the various kind of organism this is the physalia it can be also called as portuguese man of war because this is actually looking like the cap of the napoleon bonaparte what he used to wear during the time of battle this is the adamsia which is commonly known as sea anemone and within that a one fish we can see that is the clownfish next there is another specific type of organism that is looking like a pen they are sea, that's why they are known as sea pen or they can be called as penatula next there is another type of organism which is looking like a fan so this specific type of sea fan which is found that is commonly scientific name is gorgonia sp okay 
Next, we are coming to the uh, Mindrina. Mindrina is a type of the brain coral which is present under the water. This is the Ovelia, which can be also called as sea far. So many types of so many tentacles are also present here. Okay, and this is the polyform. Keep it in your mind. Jellyfish is, is actually there from where the various tentacles are hanging, and at the apical portion of the tentacles, there is a presence of the neuroblast cell through which the uh, the prey can be captured or rather you can say by the which the prey can be get paralyzed by ex expression of the hypnotoxin. So in case of jellyfish keep it in your mind they are present in the medusa stage because they are umbrella like and they are just floating into the water. Now coming to the hydra if you see the hydra you can see this is the polyp stage and they are present in the fresh water also and from the side the new bud is forming and from the new bud the new hydra also will be originated. So this is overall the structure of the hydra and these are the tentacles. Now we are coming to the next type of the phylum and that is the phylum tenophora. In case of phylum tenophora, we are having first the general features. Tenophora word if you see the meaning properly, tenos means comb and ferin means bearing. That means comb like or cumplet like structure bearing organisms are commonly, commonly known as tenophora. Okay? So they are tin containing or tenos containing cumplet like structure containing that organism who are actually called as or categorized under the tenophora. First, let's see the basic features or the general features. Habitat exclusively marine. Body organization that is the blind uh, tissue level of body organization. Body plan that is a blind sac body plan. Symmetry, obviously asymmetri uh, asymmetrical, uh, sorry, uh, biradial symmetry, obviously from because they are actually cylindrical shaped or round shaped organisms. Uh, silom, silom is exclusively their acylomate. Germ layer, they are having diploblastic, keep it in your mind in the place of mesenchyme, mesoblast is present. Segmentation cannot be found. Fate of the blastopore, that is protostomia because it is forming the mouth. Circulatory system, that is open circulatory system and that is through the water. Respiratory system, that is taking place through the body surface. Next, uh, excretory system, that is also taking place through the body surface and the excretory material is ammonotely. Uh, ammonia and nervous system is exclusively diffuse that means the nerve ganglions are actually present in diffuse condition throughout the body digestion that is intercellular that means digestion is taking place uh, outside of the cell that means within the elementary canal elementary canal is complete starting from the mouth to the anus this complete elementary canal is present sexual form exclusively this sexual form is bisexual development development is indirect that means no larval form will be produced in this specific developmental process so this is example cytopid larva reproduction reproduction is sexual type of reproduction showing organism fertilization fertilization is exclusively external fertilization because it is not happening within the female body it is happening outside the female body next special features are also present they are commonly known as sea walnut or cum jellies and next one the shape they are having the shape that is a spherical or umbrella shape they are having the tentacles also that is present or absent some in case of some of the organism they are present some of the organism they are absent locomotory organ that is containing cum plates that is eight teeth containing structure locomotory organ needoblast cells they are absent properly and in case of needle in the place of needoblast cell they are having the holoblast cell and special property is the bioluminescence that means during the night time they can emit the light they can show the fluorescence so for that reason this is commonly known as bioluminescence you can see two organisms that is pleurobrachia and tenoplana. These are the very rare organisms under this tenophora. tenophora. We all know that these tenophora organisms are very rare, very few in the number and they are present in the deep of the sea. Okay. So up to the tenophora we have completed in this specific video. In the next video we will be starting from the phylum platyhelminths and we will be moving or, or forward. I think this entire video you have listened very carefully and I think you have understood each and every point very clearly and you have enjoyed this video a lot I think. So thank you everyone, thanks a lot for seeing this video.